Hello everyone out there in YouTube land and welcome to DC Fans United. So real quick I should mention another channel. It's called Strike Raid Union. It's run by a friend of mine and he does comic book hauls, comic book reviews, and games. He talks about games. So I've had his channel pinned as one of my recommended channels there on the sidebar for a little while. And yeah, be sure and check it out if you like this kind of content. So today I am continuing my series of reviews by taking a look back at Countdown number 42. So Countdown, known as Countdown to Final Crisis for its last 24 issues, was a comic book limited series published by DC Comics. It debuted on May 9th, 2007. Since this is a countdown, the story order for the numbering is backwards. So you start with issue 51 and read down to issue number 1. So issue 42 is written by Paul Dini and she McKeever and Tom Bedard. I'm not sure why it has three writers, but it does. Maybe they each wrote different sections because if you've been following around you do notice this jumps around a lot, so I suspect maybe that's what each one did. I don't really know. Maybe one did all the dialogue and one did the story. So the pencils are by Carlos Magno. I like his style, but I've only seen it in a few books, so if you've seen a lot more of his art, let me know if it's similar to how it is in this book or not. I'm just curious because the art in this is very standard, you could say. It's like the house style for the mid-2000s, so Pete Wood's art looks very similar too from this time period. So anyways, let me know in the comments if you are a fan of Carlos Magno. The inks are by Mark McKinney and Jay Leston, and the colors are by the great Rod Reese, and the letters are by Ken Lopez. So the cover is by Terry and Rachel Dodson. They've done some of the others for this series, and Thomas Chu also worked on it. So starting off, the cover is pretty cool. I like it. It's got Mary Marvel and the Riddler, and they, it looks like they're sinking in mud or quicksand. But the title of the issue is Enter Clayface, so you can bet that they get into a tangle with Clayface. So starting off on the first page, we are finally catching up to The Flash. We've heard about the death of The Flash quite a bit and even had his funeral in the last issue. So we finally see it here on this first page and then on this great big splash page, which is the second page and also has the credit page, you could say. But yeah, that's Bart Allen there dying and it's pretty, pretty tragic. So this event had been alluded to for a couple of issues, but this is the first time where it's actually shown. So yeah, the rogues kill him. In particular, Weather Wizard, he deals this lightning bolt there at the end, which I think is what killed him, but getting hit by fire from Heatwave and Cold from Captain Cold didn't help him either. So it's pretty sad, and Trickster's there just looking on because he's actually kind of a good guy. So we go to the next page, and we find that Piper and Trickster weren't killed uh, as we thought they were the last issue. They were shot, and it doesn't say how they weren't killed, but maybe they were tranquilized or something. So they're captured by Deadshot and Multiplex. It isn't ever explained why they were they captured them, but they're probably holding them for ransom or something. You know, since Piper, Trickster, and all the rogues are wanted by the entire superhero community for killing Flash, they could, you know, they're probably going to sell them to the highest bidder knowing Deadshot. So we go to the next page, and it's Mary Marvel. She's flying around in Gotham City, and she sees some chaos and an explosion and flies down and finds the Riddler there and picks him up and flies off with him. So he tries and actually kind of succeeds. He explains that he isn't a villain now, that he's a detective, and that she can ask Batman and he'll vouch for him. So apparently that was a thing. The, the Riddler was, for a time, apparently a good guy and was investigating crimes. So they see a trail of mud and decide to follow it. And then we go to the next page, and we're catching up with Holly Robinson. She's still at the Athenian Women's shelter where she's been for a few issues and that's essentially a front organization for the Amazons because there's this whole other story line event six issue miniseries that goes along with this called Amazon's Attack and this is all tied into that and I've done reviews of all six issues of Amazon's Attack so if you haven't watched those check them out they're in the video section 
and I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to one in the description box. So she is Holly Robinson here, who is Catwoman, one of the women who is Catwoman. Anyways, she's here and she's talking to Harleen Quinzel, who is given up the name of Harley Quinn and is essentially trying to go clean and she's just working there at the women's shelter so that's kind of cool. Then we go to the next page and this is why I was thinking maybe the three authors each wrote a different part of it because each section you know it jumps from one to the next it's not a linear comic book it's not like watching an episode of a tv show it jumps around a lot. So we're picking up with Donna Troy and Jason Todd and they're there with the one monitor who's been packing them around and they're at it must be Ryan Choi, but he is the newer Adam, so they enlist his help to go look for Ray Palmer, who's the original Adam, and there's a few pages of that with some dialogue and stuff, and then we catch up with the Riddler and Mary Marvel. They're still on the trail of Clayface, and he pops up behind them and attacks them, which is really foolish of him, because Mary Marvel could probably she could easily deal with him normally but she's super powered now with Adam's powers and he had like extra powers on top of that when he gave them to her so she's just seriously incredibly strong on top of all of that black adam i think was at his peak strength in the mid 2000s so anyways clayface doesn't stand a chance and she puts him into a whirlwind that throws him into space she says she says i shot clayface into outer space and then even the riddler is like uh yeah you you might want to consider a mentor or someone who specializes in magic or perhaps anger management <laughs> and it goes to the next page when he says anger management that shows batman so that's kind of funny and karate kid comes up to him and basically he tells him that the legion of superheroes is going to leave and go back to the 31st century but he wanted to say goodbye to batman and he says i am humbly grateful to have fought such a skilled martial artist because he fought batman but batman's like don't you out fought me once but you wouldn't in a rematch because it is true, Karate Kid beat him in a fight, which is, you know, <laughs> Karate Kid's one of the very few people to have ever beaten Batman hand to hand. I think one of the reasons he was able to do it, aside from just being essentially the best martial artist there ever was, is he's from the future where they have martial arts styles that weren't invented during Batman's time. So he puts on his flight ring as all the Legion of Superhero members have and flies away. So we pick up with Jimmy Olsen and he's at the Daily Planet and he's doing doodles of various superhero costumes he might try out because if you've been following along you know he has superpowers now. Alright and now we're back to the rogues who have been captured by Deadshot and Trickster pulls out one of his teeth it's a false tooth and he spits it up in the air and it blows up and they use that as a chance to escape and they headbutt one of the guys and run out the door <laughs> and then we get this really cool full splash page where they're falling out of the jet so they ran out the nearest door they found and now they're falling and it looks like they must be over Metropolis because you can see there's just buildings on onto the horizon. I suppose it could be Gotham or any big city like that. I just, I feel like it's Metropolis. <laughs> In any case, that's the end of that issue, and then we get a few more pages. It looks like just three this time, which are the history of the multiverse. We're up to chapter eight. Those are really cool. They recap what happened in the time stream in the past. And I find this last page really interesting because they talk about the source wall. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and there was a pretty cool ad. One of the pages here was an ad for the Metal Men. And I think the Metal Men are pretty cool. But if you've read this, let me know. It looks pretty cool. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. Really try Trying to grow the channel right now so you know anything you can do helps like comment share hit the bell for notifications all right and that's all for now and as always thank you for watching end of line